All right, good morning, everyone. Uh, for those of you who have not met me, my name is Jennifer Jobst. Um, and we're gathered today to stab each other with lance. No, uh, that's a different one. Um, we're going to be practicing some lance handling techniques from a 14th century Mamluk Furusaya book. And I know you're all standing here, you're like, well, wait, this is a Rosfecton weekend. We're doing, you know, European stuff. Why are we studying a book that was written in Arabic? So um, a number of years ago, I was on the internet looking at pictures of horses, as one does, and I found a diagram that looked very much like a diagram from a 16th century riding manual. And if you have this handout, it's a little hard to see. It's in the top left corner. Um, the one, the diagram on the left-hand side is from this book, this 14th century book, Nihayat al-Sul. And it's a diagram of doing spiral in, spiral out. And it looks very much like the diagram from a number of different 16th century Western European texts. And I saw this diagram and I was like, where is this from? I've never seen this before. And that's what led me to kind of this rabbit hole of research looking at um, different Arabic texts. Unfortunately for many of us, they're not translated out of Arabic. There are very few of them that have been translated to any other language. Um, I was fortunate, though, to meet uh, the lady who translated this book, the Lance section of this book. Her name is Kirsty Jensen. And I worked with her for about a week on trying to figure out what they were doing with their horses and with their lances based on her translation from 2013. So that's what this entire class is based off of. The interesting thing about Furusaya literature is it's from the Mamluk Golden Age. So we're looking about 900 to roughly 1500 starting with the Abbasid dynasty and the caliphates in the 9th century. And as a way to make their caliphate legitimate, they had libraries. They created these, these amazing libraries. And they needed books. And so what they did was they copied and translated books from Sanskrit and from Greek and from Latin. And they kind of mushed them all together. And they created literature for their libraries. So some of the documentation, some of the exercises in this book are actually taken from a second century book written by Arian on tactics of warfare. So there is a long history on the Furusaya literature of sort of adopting and copying and modifying things from other cultures and places. And so that's kind of where this all plays together. And you'll see as we start working on some of these lance techniques, some of them may look very familiar. They may feel very familiar. And if you look ahead to the Western European literature, like Mayer, like Paulus Call, like uh, Lichtenhauer, Fiore, you'll feel like maybe I've seen these before. And you'll be able to see there are some connections. And I think there's a couple pictures on the back of the sheet where you'll see at least a couple of connections. So look out for those and see kind of as we're going along. What's particularly special about this book that we're looking at today is it includes 25 banud, which more or less translates to exercises that were done with the lance. Now, not only were these banud specifying how to hold your lance, how to shift it, where your attacks and defenses are, but they're also specifying where to go with your horse. And they rode in a maiden, or essentially the hippodrome, a riding space. There's a picture in this book, a nice little rectangle, where you stand with the company in the front, and then the corners and the back and the front of the maiden are labeled. So, and it tells you in the exercises, first you go to opposite the company, you go to the left flank, you go to the right flank. So it's telling you where to circle. It's telling you where to turn. And when you start drawing these exercises out, they look an awful lot like you know, any uh, sort of raining pattern or a modern dressage test or anything like that. So not only do we have the ability to know what they were doing with their lances, but we also know what kind of exercises they were riding. And so we're going to try to put some of this together. We don't have enough space for everybody, but hopefully you can take some of this home with you and play with it at home on your own. Um, so we're going to go ahead and start with some of the lance handling techniques. Uh, this is my husband, Sean, and he's going to demonstrate, and also Ryan. They're going to help me. So um, the most important thing to remember is this is an ambidextrous game, right? 
you're not just holding the lance with your right hand. You can hold it with your right hand, you can hold it with your left hand, you can hold it with both hands. Um, and the same thing goes for your reins. So the simplest thing to start with is a Roman hold. Anybody want to joust? Um, so this could be done. So you've got your reins in your other hand and your reins always stay over the horse's neck. And this will become very important in a moment when we start moving our lances around. So you can do the Roman block or the Roman attack on the right side of your horse, on the left side of your horse. You can also do it across your body. So now you start seeing why your lance length matters a bit. And then you can shift your rein hand. So now I'm holding it with my left hand and I've got my reins in my right hand. So if you're doing that, when you shift that side, you basically shift the lance, lift the rein straight up, straight up, grab it with the other hand and bring it straight back down again. So you've never pulled back, you've never gone left and right, you've just gone up and down yep. in order to make the shift. And one thing I forgot to mention initially, the book specifies that your length of the lance should be 10 times the length of your forearm. So that's from your elbow to your wrist. Uh, that's about, or no more than or that. No more than that. That's about 2.4 meters, for I believe, for, uh, for Sean. It's a little less for me. Um, so about those of you who short. have longer lances, you'll find it a little more challenging. They recommend having the lightest lance possible, but also strong. Um, a European ash was particularly um, prized. prized by them. Um, so if you do have a longer lance or if you've got one of the short dowels, it doesn't really matter. You can sort of play around with whatever you want. Um, okay, the next one is Khorasani. So this was taken from or adopted from the Khorasani people. Um, and this one, you're holding the reins in your forward hand and your back hand is by your belt. It's not like this. It's, yeah, it's not it's this. It's actually at your belt. So the, the butt of the lance is, and if you have a long lance, you'll probably have to cheat it backwards. Like you you may have to cheat backwards. But if you have one that's really properly sized for this, then it can be right at your belt, and that's a comfortable Yeah, on your, distance. or by your hip. Yeah, you don't, wanna, you don't wanna rest it against your body, because if you do hit something, then that's a soft, squishy pit. This yeah. was frequently, <laughs> don't, you'll don't see- Don't kill yourself the, with your own lance. In the Banud, this was frequently used as a charging position. Yep. This was very often, you know, the Khorasani charge, which was, you know, to the forward, and, and a straight movement from this position, which is very strong. Yep. You'll also notice that in all of these lance techniques, there's always two points of contact, right? So this is a very strong position. Even this, you've got two points, right? It's also a very strong position. Now, the other thing is, remember, this is ambidextrous, so we don't just get to play with our right hands. We can also shift it left. And it's very specific on how you do this. You take, if I'm holding it with my right hand by my hip, you push your right hand forward to your left, you switch the reins, and then you pull it back with your left hand. So you can do that right to le or left to right again. You push it forward and up, shift the reins, and pull it back. Now imagine doing this while you're cantering your horse and turning around at the same time. It's very easy. So let's practice that again. Push it forward and up, switch your reins, pull it back. And so the translation to the word from Arabic to English is shift. Yes. And they use it for every change. Doesn't matter what the change is. They say, now shift your lance, which we often usually find in the exercises means shift your rein as well. So you might be going on the left lead and then turn your horse around and shift your lance ends up meaning turn your horse around, shift to the other side. And usually that means you were riding left-handed, now you're riding right-handed. Yep. Right. Now with this, yes. Uh, typically it is, is it a gentle canter and sometimes it says to extend your horse in a charge. So there, there's no mention of lateral movements. There's no trot. There's uh, it's circles with turns. Um, no errors. There's no errors. Uh, hopefully, there's no errors. What? Um, <laughs> no intentional not errors. Not on, not on purpose anyway. Um, and and you do so. You start out. You walk out. You know the company is in the front. You walk out from the company. You arrange yourself, and then you would start your exercise with all of your your circles and turns and whatnot. 
So this is great. Khorasani is great, right? We can defend. We've got about a 30 degree range of motion. You can defend on the other side of your horse as well or attack if you need to. So this is cool, but what about when somebody's coming from behind you or out to the side? Yeah, well, okay, so, so one option is this, but now look at what happened to my rein hand, right? <laughs> Got to keep the rein hand here. So we're going to move our lance to our reins and do what Sean just did, which is you're going to push the butt of your lance forward again and then pull the lance backward. And you can, we don't really know whether you're supposed to do it overhanded or underhanded. Some of the miniatures look like underhanded maybe is correct, but I find depending on whether I'm fighting somebody on the ground, I like overhanded. If I'm fighting somebody in the saddle, I have a tendency of doing underhanded. But so this is great because you've got behind you, you've got out to the side. You have a, you have a good range of motion here. Now where it gets super fun, is if you're going along, there's somebody behind you, you can do what's called an inversion. So I can let my lance go with my rein hand. And as you know, as my, I'm walking with my horse, now I'm defending behind me. It's just over my shoulder. I'm defending behind me. So somebody's trying to attack me from behind. This is strong, right? I've still got two points of contact, my hand in the ground. Yeah, it's just, it sounds like Garocha, right? So then the fun thing is, well, now I'm, I'm defensive, right? Well, this is a problem. I really want to kill the guy behind me. He's kind of annoying. There's, yeah, him. So I can turn my horse under this. I've still got my reins. I have, you know, I'm turning my horse with my reins. I pick my lance back up, and now he's dead. And we're back in Khorasani. Now you're back in Khorasani again, by the way. Right. So let's go ahead and try that. For those of you, if you've got your lance behind you, in your right hand. You go from Khorasani to Tagri to drop it. Now I'm inversion. It's behind me. You're inversion behind you. Turn away from the guy's spear. Don't drop the reins. Don't drop your reins. <laughs> That's bad. And now you're back in Khorasani. And now you pick it up and you're back in Khorasani. Yeah. So it's very much like Garocha, but with two hands, right? So for those who missed that, again, so we're in Khorasani, right? Shift. So Khorasani, grab it. Shift your reins. Now we're in Tagri, right? So now we have full, and we're in Tagri, so we're blocking somebody directly behind us. Drop it to the ground. That's your second point of contact. It's on the ground, so I'm able to do this. If he's coming from my right, then I want to turn with my horse, pick it right back up. I'm back in Khorasani, and I'm going back at him. Now the, the question always is, well, how do I know which way to turn? So this, is, this assumes that I'm defending from somebody on my right. So I'm always going to, this is another big clue. Turn away from your opponent's lance. Don't turn into your opponent's lance. It's bad. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but so I find it, when you talk about the overhead, underhead thing, I find it really awkward to then, if you, if you have dropped uh, the lance, if you do an overhead and you drop the lance, uh, yeah, so don't forget you're going. You to turn under it. No, no, you're. So you need to change at that point anyway. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I agree with I that. I feel like the underhand is a lot better because it, that's, it's also more, uh, more garotchery because you can actually leave the lands here and you can turn under it. Yep. Sean, let's do a couple more Khorasani to Tagri practices. Yeah, and for those who missed the very first part of this, again, Khorasani to Tagri is a really key one. It's done in so many of the Banud, right? You're, you're in Khor Le Khorasani left at this point, right? Hand comes together. Right, you don't change the reins because you're just changing the lance. Yeah. Grab the lance and now, yeah. so you can envision if somebody's coming on foot at me, so we'll do this, somebody's coming at me, you come over here, right? I'm here, oh gee, there's somebody there, right? And I can be riding and fighting as I go by, no problem. Yep. Then don't hit yourself, right. But they have, feel like they have that? Khorasani, Tagri, right? And then if you want to do the rest of that exercise, pretend you're doing Tagri 180 degrees behind you, just drop it to the ground, right? If he's coming from that side, you want to turn away from his lance while you're blocking it, turning under your pole, back in Khorasani, coming back the other way. This is where the length of the lance actually ends up mattering a bit, right? 
10 times your forearm with a short horse, you can do that. With a tall horse, you'll discover you're, you probably are not all the way on the ground. You know? What else? Uh, Absetson, throwing. Uh, so the, the last piece we're going to talk about, we will not be doing this today. There's too many horses for any actual contact. Um, but there's this, this concept of um, you're going to throw the other person's lance. Okay, so this does not mean like, you know, that's not what we're doing. Don't throw your lance. But it, it is similar to Abzetzen, or it's the same concept as an Abzetzen. So, or set aside. So I will let the two of them demonstrate. So for instance, I'm in Khorasani. I'm going, oh, he's over here. Go to Tagri left. Right? Just, it's the exact same concept as, as in Abzetzen in, in uh, Lichtenhauer tradition. It's just a knock it aside. It works really well from Tagri. Right? Because I have all this strength. Two hands, I'm still above my horse's neck. Yeah, in this case, what I was doing, right, just because he's over there, I'm in Khorasani left, I'm going this way, I'm going to go to Tagri, right, here's my rein, it never left the horse's neck, and I'm able to defend even though he's coming up on my back seven, as we like to say, you know, this isn't, this is what, unlike in fencing, this is a problem in fencing, right, this is not a problem in Mamla, I've got plenty of ability to fight from here. Got so that? if you if you are going to practice that one where you you know actually make contact with somebody else, please give yourselves plenty of space. Yeah. Yeah, and so you'll find that remember that because the hand with the rein is supposed to stay still, it's this ha it has to be like a pivot, right? You're if you're doing tagri, then whichever hand has the rein is is almost like a pivot. You're just going to do this. You have a little bit of motion here. Right, depending on your bit, but you're not going to ever going to come back here. You don't want to go like this. You want to leave this still, and make this the action. Yeah. I just want his lance not killing me. I don't really care where it goes when I smack it, as long as it doesn't go into my horse, right? <laughs> Yeah. So when we have, that's a great question. When we have done this, like as a as a sparring match, we'll put on fencing, we'll uh, masks, we'll put on eye cops for our horses, we'll get little rubber tips, right? And then we are careful on the throwing, on the to to control where that goes. So you don't do it quite so hard, you know. If we we're actually, if he's, if we're really, then I might just knock it enough to be able to poke him in his fencing mask while I'm, you know, on a left lead around him, right? And he's not obviously doing what he just did. <laughs> well, he could be, but. <laughs> so um, before we go get the horses, we're actually going to practice a couple of the first, the very first of the banud, the very first of the exercises. So we're going to practice the lance handling, and then we'll go get horses. And for those with horses, we can, we can uh, do a little practice there. So um, I'm going to try to remember how it starts out, because I don't have that piece of paper on me. But essentially, um, so it starts out, you you'd walk away from the company. Oh, thanks. Um, so you walk away from the company, you get yourself all nice and, nice and settled, and your lance is on the right-hand side of the horse. The tip of it is up by the horse's ear, and the bottom, the base of it, it should said it should be about a, a, an arm's length from the ground, or a, a forearm length from the ground. So you're riding like this. Now, this is really interesting because if you think about it, and your lance is 10 times the length of your forearm, in order for this to work, your horse isn't that big. Um, and this was actually one of the problems we had when we were doing some of the inversions and the turns. When we had a uh, 2.4 meter lance, we couldn't make the turn except on our smallest horse. <laughs> um, so, so that was kind of an interesting finding. So we're riding along like this. We're gonna do a circle like this in reality, when we all get out here, we're just going to be on one big circle because that's the only way we can figure out how to fit this many horses and not kill each other. Um, so we're going to go from here. And then we move the lance. <laughs> Throw your reins away. Don't do that. And then you're going to move the lance across your saddle and shift it to your left hand. So you're going to be riding like this. This is very fancy. You're going to put your right hand behind on the saddle. 
So you're, you're balancing your lance at a canter, by the way. No, we're going to be walking today. But all of this was done at a canter. And, and this was the earliest, easiest of the exercises, just to make that clear. Yeah, this was the easy one. So we're, we would do a circle like this, and these are large circles, right? They're the size, you know, 20 meter plus or minus. So you ride once like this, and then you raise your hand and you wave to the audience because you're awesome and you're like, I am so good at this. Um, and then you take your, your right hand, you're gonna place your forearm along the lance like so. Your reins are still in the middle. You're gonna spin the lance around and end up with it back over here. Yeah, for those of you with long lances, please don't take your neighbor out. Yeah, so it's a, it's a counterclockwise spin and then back to back down here. Now, one of the things you will find, there are mistakes in the handouts. Fully admit to that. Every time we read these, we're like, oh man, we missed that point. Interpretation is a fun thing. So if you find something that's not quite right, shoot me a text and you know, just play with it. Um, what do we do next? Okay. Then you spin the finish. Oh, and then we have to turn the horse at this point. So we're doing a 180 degree turn as we, as we spin, actually. That spin is done in the middle of a turn. I should say that. And we should say that they don't actually describe what the turn is. In every one of the, there's, in these exercises, you're constantly spinning the horse around to go the other the way on the circle. There is no place that describes what is that. Is it a pirouette? Is it a rain, you know, a rain back? What, we don't know. A uh, rollback, sorry. Uh, you know, Double back caro turn, like you stop your horse and you turn around? Probably not, but. Is it a small, small very tight canter? We, we don't know. Basically, turn your horse 180 degrees and go the other way. However, right. that works for you. Um, it does specify. So in this, every so, time it tells you that. Yeah. So here's the thing: if your if the tip of your lance is on the horse's right cheek, do not turn your horse to the right. I have it here. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So if you've spun it and you're holding it like this, you're going to turn your your you, your horse should be turning away from the tip of your lance. In, No. Probably elegantly, you're doing it as you turn. <laughs> as you're turning, yeah. Yeah. And you'll also find in a lot of the Benoud, if you start looking at the other ones, the shifts are with turns. So things like I'm in a Corsani and I'm going one direction, then I'm shifting to a Tagri. This is also the moment I'm doing a 180 degree turn and now I'm, you know, going back the other way. And, and many times there's probably a lead change that, you know, they don't specifically say that. And your lance is sort of helping with that lead change, right? Because you've shifted it from one side. Oh, look, I'm going the other way. You know, I've got the weight of my lance now helping me make the turn. Okay, and then what are we doing after this? I'm where we're at. Right. Now we spin the lance clockwise over our head so it ends up back on the right side again. So we've made our turn. We're here, we've made our turn. Now we spin the lance clockwise and just put it right back where it started. Yep. And then we're going to Corisani. So it says, uh, it, for those following along at home, it says step six. Uh, so make the lance, uh, step five, make the lance tip cross the horse's head to the left side and circle once. So here we are, we're circling. Bring the lance forward, retract it. So you, yeah, so basically get your hand and then Corisani. So now you should be in a Corisani with the, the tip of the lance on the horse's left side. Right, so if your hand is in the middle of the lance, you bring it forward, you grab the hand, lance with your left hand and the rein, you can slide your hand back, push the lance a little bit forward, and now you're fully in Corisani. Right. So you go from here. It's a really simple shift. Move your lance, move your right hand back, and there you are. So you're here in the middle. You bring the lance up to your hand. Remember, your right hand doesn't move. You shift your right hand back, and you push the lance forward, and now you're Corisani on the left side of the horse's head. One more time. You're here. You put the lance in your left hand, you shift your right, pull your right hand back, push the lance forward. Awesome. Okay. 
And that's two, then you circle two times to the right. Yep. And then you would shift the reins and change the Corsani block to the other side while you turn your horse at 180 degrees. So this is what we okay. were practicing before. So as you are turning, the lance comes up and you, whoops, and you shift your reins. <laughs> Don't do what oh, I just did. I did that wrong, actually. <laughs> I did that totally wrong. So this is what we practiced before, where you're shifting from Corisani to Corisani. So where you push the lance the right. up, yeah. change your reins, pull the lance back. Push the lance up, change your reins, pull the lance yeah. back. As you're turning. So this one, so in this one, you are, the lance is uh, through your left hand right. So the lance is on the left side and you're turning to the right. So it's as if you're attacking somebody the outside of the circle. You shift the reins to the other way around. Now you're still attacking and you're gonna be going the left way around the circle and still attacking somebody the outside of the circle. Okay, so you are, in this case. Yeah. There are others where you're attacking somebody on the inside of the circle. Yeah, yeah. Right. And where does it end? Um, uh, like this is step seven. Then there's a whole lot of text, which are the next six or eight steps, whatever they are, that we didn't write out for you. Yeah. Just so that you can go play with. So we're, ju we're going to stop there today, because that's a lot. And we've got horses to do and not stab each other. Um, but for those of you who are interested, all the rest of the text for this particular Benut is on the bottom half of that page. Um, and at the end, um, we've got several other Benudes sort of spelled out, at least the first few steps. There are um, Benudes and, with two riders and two lances where you are, you are doing the exercises almost as a mirror of each other, with like the lances pointing towards each other, you're chasing each other, then you spin and you go the other way. Those are really fun to do, but be careful with them. Yep. And then there's the... Then there's one that says, uh, you know, there's a Benud with two lances, but nobody does it. So of course we had to try it. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, so typically, it's a little hard with this, right? Typically, you see in the, in the diagrams, it looks something like this. There, there's a big ring on Mamluk uh, reins. They have a ring at the top, and they have a loop, and then the reins are gathered. So they're basically riding with a big loop above the horse and a lot of loose rein because they're doing all of this sort of stuff. Okay, so you grab, so you can have, you have a ring that you switch. Yeah, so you have a, and I think that loop was used in other places. Like when they do the sword work, they put their arm through that loop so they can do sword and buckler on a horse. And when they do the bow work, they put that loop over their, their horse's, over their saddle's horn, and then they shoot and they pick it back up again. So yeah. there's a whole lot of. So for today, I would say if you're riding, hold the reins however you're comfortable with. Um, we can play with it more. The, the goal is really just to sort of be able to do a little bit of basic lance handling and then take it home from there. Whatever way doesn't have you dropping the rein when you shift the lance. <laughs> yeah. That's probably your, the, the way to go. All right. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, have, you, have you published it yet? When can we get this? I want this. Um, <laughs> I can get you, I can send you a copy of the PDF of the translation. Um, but with okay. all of the steps spelled out, we're still working on it. Yeah. So okay. she's yeah. writing a book. It's not yeah, ready. Yeah, working on. We're working on it. <laughs> we, can wait. we can wait. Yeah, we can wait. Um, all right. So for those of you with horses who would like to come bring them and play, please feel free to go get them. If you do not have a horse, we're gonna just hang out over here and keep playing around with weapons. So uh, yeah.